right, here we go. So generally we start off a little bit slow, just letting people come in. If you have any sort of meditation practice, or if you're a therapist yourself, or you have some way that you get into a relaxed, calm behavior, into a meditation or into a healing state, I'd like you to start that right now. The intention of whole body breathing is to really activate that healing state. What we're not trying to do is teach you a breathing technique or a breathing exercise. Rather, what we're proposing with whole body breathing is that there actually is a natural anatomically correct way to breathe. And that involves actually the entire body. And when we wake up the entire body's role in the breath, then you get optimal function throughout the body. Because the sort of rhythmic movement of the breathing is required for lymphatic movement. It's required to help digestion. It's required to help the cardiovascular system, circulatory. And importantly, when the neck musculature and the cerebral spinal fluid, but the neck musculature primarily, when that's involved in breathing, when we wake that up, you end up getting a natural craniosacral session happening. Okay. So this becomes self craniosacral therapy or self cranio osteopathy. Okay. If at any point you have a question, you can feel free to unmute yourself or you can jump into the chat. We're about five minutes in now, so I will get started. The first thing that we want to do is focus on what we can definitely feel. Okay. When you take a breath in, I want you to feel where can I feel the breathing? Where are the actual physical sensations of breath happening for me? What we're doing here, and as I talk, you can continue to feel, okay? There's going to be many times where I'm talking, but that doesn't interrupt the meditation or the, the session. You just continue to feel what you're feeling on every single inhale. What do I feel? And the first part of what whole body breathing is proposing to you is that you can feel this all the time. So every time you take a breath in, your body is feeling this. It's just we're not tuned into it. Our attention might be somewhere else. We might be thinking about something actively engaged in the world. But that doesn't mean our, our body senses are not picking up this breathing sensation. They're always picking it up. And so now I want you to go inside and feel every single time I breathe in, what does my body feel? I'm going to say even for everybody here, it will be slightly different. Different parts of the body are going to light up. Uh, could I ask anyone to give me some feedback about what they're feeling? We'll tailor the session that way. On the inhale, what do you feel? Uh, can you hear me? Yep. I, I become very aware of uh, more of my diaphragm, and I almost feel like I'm forcing it, mm -hmm. the breathing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I've found that that sometimes does happen. Um, so doing yoga during yoga at, at the end of the session, um, yeah. So it seems like it's almost a force and and, and not as um, natural. Mm -hmm. Or because when I'm not focusing on it, it's uh, I'm not conscious of it. Yeah. Okay. And that's happening every time you bring your conscious awareness to your breathing, you feel like there's a forcing going on in the diaphragm? 
just about, yeah, until I, I take my awareness off perhaps on it. Okay. We're, we're exploring together, right? So this is really good. And the proposal with whole body breathing is that that tension is always there. It's not that like uh, the awareness br- creates tension. Rather that your, your breath is always feeling tension in your diaphragm. And now that we're bringing awareness to it, we're noticing the tension that's already been there. So that's really good. Really, really good. Okay. Anybody else? Hi. I tend to notice that um, I've gotten better at breathing around the bottom of my ribs through the Qigong practices I do and breath breath work I do. But what I notice is like when I get up to sort of mid chest, it sort of gets stuck and won't. I, I can't seem to get up to the top part of my lungs, which I find odd. That's what I've noticed. That's really good, Linda. That's really good. Um, this is a, a little bit of what we're doing is um, collectively, I want us to come to similar conclusions, actually, rather than me explaining everything. It's like if everyone gives their own little input, uh, we can form it into a theory. And that's what we built uh, over time with whole body breathing. Uh, Corlin, you can go ahead. I have a hand raised there. If you can unmute and go ahead. Okay, no worries. If you if you figure out the unmute later, you can you can just jump in. Okay. So now on the inhale, and I think for most of us, we can feel our chest and our diaphragm. If you're feeling the inhale anywhere else. Uh, Brenda, you're in the training, so like you can continue feeling it where you're feeling it. But just for the purposes of this class, let's try to bring awareness into the chest. And you can do that by just taking your hand and confirming that when I breathe in, there's pressure against my hand. There's definitely movement happening. And then same, you can go underneath both armpits with your hands, you can take your hands underneath the armpits and feel on the sides of my rib cage. There's expansion. And if you have a chair behind you, you may be able to notice with a, without a chair, but I want you to feel between your shoulder blades at your back. If you lean into a wall or lean into a chair, it might be easier to feel, or you can put your hands behind yourself as well. and feel expansion happening. And what we're trying to do is wake up the, the proprioception, essentially, that there, every single time I breathe in, my body can feel a lot of movement, but I might not be conscious of it. So now, now if you continue to feel with your eyes closed, breathe in, can you feel underneath your armpits, sides of the rib cage, back of the rib cage, that there's expansion, 360 degrees happening. And Lily and Linda, what you both said was exactly perfect because in our theory that we have multiple diaphragms, not just the main respiratory diaphragm, but what will happen is that on the inhale, we can breathe in. Right when we start breathing, it's an easy breath. But as we get to the top of our inhale, as the inhale gets close to ending, we start feeling more and more tightness in the torso. I want everyone to see if you can pick up on that. That Initially, you breathe in, the breath just falls right in. And then it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Once it reaches its maximum tightness, that's when the exhale naturally starts. If we were to try and breathe in deeper than that, we would breathe in a very compensated way. The body would listen to us and take a deeper breath, but it would do it in a compensated, it would recruit different muscles. That isn't necessarily what it wants to do. If we feel that upper limit of tension on the inhale, every time we breathe in, we can feel that upper limit, we can feel the tightness. 
and start working into it. It's like an internal massage we're doing to ourselves. When you have a body worker, a massage therapist, anybody, they'll see where your muscles are tight and they'll work into them from the outside. They'll push into them and release things that way. And what you can do is you can just feel on your inhale, you're literally fluid pressure increasing on the inside. And then wherever it's tight, that's going to be the upper limited react inhale. And you're gently massaging into it. We're not changing the breathing pattern. We're just noticing what happens actually on every inhale. This is where we start going into psychosomatics as well. In the, the tightness that we feel in the body, our, our body is always registering that tightness, even if consciously we're not registering it. Subconsciously, we're registering it. And when we can, when we have too much of it and it becomes it leaks into the consciousness, it can be anxiety, those sort of tensions in the body. I feel like we have a pretty advanced group of people here, so I'm going to actually say a lot of theory. Okay. And so every time we breathe in too, we can understand that the physical sensation and emotional sensation are not necessarily two different sensations, right? When we have anxiety, we feel it physically. When you have a heartache, anger as well, we feel it physically. And so the physical sensation and what we call an emotion is like a label that we can put on it. Where do we want to put the label? For our purposes right now, it's unnecessary. You can feel when you breathe in, I can feel tension. That tension that I feel, the physical tension, is also emotional, actually. I'll just leave it for a few minutes to let everyone increase the amount of feeling that they have. And the proposal is also that if you stay with it longer, it, it only increases the amount of felt sense. When part of our body goes to sleep, or our leg goes to sleep, or our arm goes to sleep, hand, however it is, when it wakes up, it starts to wake up with tingles initially. It's a numb area, and then it starts to wake up with tingling, and then you get more actually felt sense of what's happening there. And that's typically the progression with the whole body breathing, that you're going to bring your breath just into yourself and feel what's happening. And that area that you feel tightness or restriction, if we stay with that restriction, we stay with the tightness, we're giving ourselves more information, more feedback. Are you okay, Linda? Did anything happen there? Yeah, I'm getting triggered and I, I've been having a lot of trouble with my shoulders and I know it's connected to all this area up here. So it's, it's just kind of bringing up fairly recent grief and I, I can feel this like kind of ah feeling <laughs> panic <laughs> yeah. yeah and I have a history of asthma which has been pretty good but but yeah there's still some residual I think so okay very good thank you um I'll give a little bit more theory it's just that in whole body breathing we consider that there's seven diaphragms actually 
roughly lining up with the seven chakras, and one of them would be your thoracic inlet. So this across the shoulders. Um, I don't know if everybody can feel, but when you breathe in, the chest expands on all sides and the shoulders expand. Clavicle, all of this expands and comes apart. So we're going to consider that a diaphragm as well. Because it's an upper limit to your expansion, essentially. If you want to breathe in and your chest wants to expand and lift, but your shoulders are tight, that's your upper limit of expansion. They're not going to go past where your shoulder tightness is. This has to loosen and relax. On every inhale, it wants to loosen and relax. Leon, that's very good. I can feel my spine popping, especially around my neck and shoulders. That's uh, certainly part of what we're hoping to happen. And when when people tell us part of the theory that I haven't explained yet, that's how the theory really gets built. Um, because then it's not me leading, you know, saying to expect this and then it happens. It's, it's just this is everyone's feedback coming in. Okay, so I have a lot of tingling across the left side of my scalp and around my left side of my TMJ into my shoulder, basically all my left side. And last week it was my left ribs. SG, you're doing really good. So ex exactly that every time we come back to this, like on the left, last time it was the left ribs and now it's the entire left side of the scalp and TMJ into the shoulder. Like the amount of feeling increases. One area might light up when you start doing this. You just feel the tension in one area. But if we stay with that tension, continue breathing into it, like a web, like a spider's web, all the connective tissue and the nerve endings start to light up slowly over time. And we're giving our body more, our nervous system, we're giving it all of the information it needs to start self-correcting. The next thing we're going to try to do is induce a little bit more tension into the system okay we are a fascial tensegrity structure and what that means is we have connective tissue running through the whole body head to toe and movement in any area or constriction in any area affects the whole thing and so when we feel on the inhale everything we're doing is tied to the inhale just initially that's where we start off for everything on the inhale feel the amount of expansion that you have and where the tightness is And then you're gonna clench your fists. You're gonna induce tightness into your fists. So clench the fist tightly. And with the fist clenched tightly, see if there's, how is your inhale? What's the maximum inhale? And then when you relax, whenever you choose to, you can relax your fists and see, is there a difference? and how much inhale I'm getting or where the inhale is. So I'd, I'd encourage everyone to experiment with that, opening and closing the fists. And for anyone who does feel things that's good if you're not feeling things then that's also fine just continue to feel whatever you're feeling like whatever you're feeling is correct okay like it's what you're feeling Really good, SG. And then, yeah, um, so SG, this is their sharing that it reduces the expansion when they have their fists clenched and it creates instant and noticeable tension in the face and the cheeks. That's really good. You have uh, SG, you've, you've taken it from just the rib cage and into the face. So now when you induce tension into the system, you can actually get more feeling up into your head. And this is how we're gonna transition into the craniosacral session. When we get angry, our fists clench. 
So one potential reason, as we said earlier, that when we breathe in, we reach a natural upper limit of tightness and then we breathe out. Usually for most of us, that upper limit of the in-breath is not a full breath. We're, we're just breathing in as far as we can before we reach our tension limit and then we breathe out. We're not, we're not breathing fully and we're not living fully. We're not taking the whole range. And a partial reason for that, there's many, right? As many emotions as you want to describe. But anger is one description that usually people clench their fists. And if you clench your fists and you never fully let go of that emotion, you will continue to have slightly clenched fists. And it won't be noticeable until you bring your awareness to it or something will start to break down. Um, in my personal story, I used to be a very angry young man. And I had crippling back spasms that would put me out. Like as soon as it spasmed, I would be out on the couch for two days. I can't move. And releasing, using this breathing to go into the psoas muscle and release things, I started noticing my anger was starting to release as well. I used to wake up with my fists clenched, like tightly clenched. And uh, as the anger started to dissipate, as the personality changed, um, my back pain, my back decompressed. So the compression I was holding myself in slowly went away and I, I could open up um actually there's a was a study that had people with back pain and it said that the best predictor of whether somebody has lower back pain is not actually an mri scan you can take the mri to the doctor and they can't predict as well as a mood questionnaire if the mood questionnaire predicted whether someone's going to have back pain even better than a scan did, even though the scan shows like this person should definitely have back pain, this person shouldn't <laughs> because you can probably imagine what their responses were on the mood questionnaire to end up with the back pain. And it's not, I'm not saying we deserve these things or anything like that, but the thing is that we, we do things to ourselves and what we want to do is bring our consciousness to what we're doing to ourselves. How are, what sort of tension are we holding ourselves in? What sort of uh, grief, any sort of patterns that we have, these are all necessary, but they have to flow through us. They have to express through our body and then leave us alone at some point. If we end up holding on to them, or the only way our body can hold anything is by holding on to itself. The only way our consciousness can hold anything, my consciousness can't control this, this cup, it's over there. The only thing it can control is some sort of constriction, tightness in the body. Um, this is called samkocha, like the, the egoic tension in the body. Okay. So hopefully as we're doing this, we're getting a better sense of our chest and just expansion. Okay, we're going to go back to that because we'll get into a cranial sacral session now. So now when you breathe in, just feeling the expansion across your rib cage, under the armpits between the shoulder blades. Your shoulders coming apart naturally on every inhale. Some of you may be pulling the shoulders up towards the ears on every inhale too. If that's where you're holding tension, you wanna notice that. You may feel it into the neck. Now what we're going to try to do is I will have you try four different ways. Okay. And if you're, if you're feeling anything and you're going through anything, you can just continue to feel what you're feeling. Okay. Like you don't have to like keep up with the class. Okay. But if you just rotate your head forward and we want to remember that our spine does not connect with our head at the back. So the back of your head is not where your spine connects. Your spine connects underneath your ears, just behind your jaw. If you can even take your fingers and reach just behind your jaw, underneath your ears, you can even feel the spine if you push it a little bit deep, your atlas bones right there. So this is where your spine connects. With whole body breathing too, we're trying to build our internal map. It, it can be, uh, the map can be slightly incorrect. Uh, so yeah, if everyone can feel that and just rotate along that axis. So when I say tilt your head forward, I don't mean do this, I mean this. You're rotating here at the top of the head. Okay, very good everyone. And now if you rotate forward, just rotate your head forward, hold it forward, and then take a deep breath in. Can you feel your head rotate backwards slightly? 
on every inhale. Whenever you breathe in, does the head slightly rotate backwards? You have musculature going from your neck all the way down to your chest. Sternocleidomastoid is one of those muscles. Okay. And when you breathe in, it's going to be lifting up your chest. And then reciprocally, like a rubber band, it's going to be pulling on your temporal bones and your occiput, pulling you slightly backwards. Yeah. If you can feel that, you now have direct access to your head so that even if you don't rotate your head forward, if you're just breathing normally, you might be able to feel a slight pull behind your ears. You have access to both of your temporal bones now. I'm gonna give you three more methods. And the suggestion is whatever you feel the most, that's where you wanna stay with. Because that's where your body's letting you in. Like we're gonna work with the body, right? So wherever you have the most amount of feeling, the most amount of sensation, you just continue to work on that one because your body's saying explore this more. But the next method would be essentially leaning back. So you're gonna lean your head back. And then when you breathe in, take a deep breath. And I want you to notice your lower jaw, your mandible. On the inhale, is there a pull on the lower jaw? And then once you can feel it, you just go back to neutral and continue to see, can I feel it while I'm at neutral still? Does that pull still exist? So the exercise is just to wake up proprioception. It's not, you can repeat it to wake it up again. But once we've woken up the feeling, then we go back to neutral and just feel it. Okay, on every inhale. If you could feel the back of the head, maybe now you can feel the back of the head and the jaw. That there's a downwards tug. And we're, we're taking normal breaths once you can feel it. In order to get feeling initially, you might take a deep breath. But once you can feel the things, you just take a normal breath and you're just noticing every time I breathe in, there's a slight hug on my cranium. And then the next two methods are simply you just rotate your head to the left. And then when, every time you breathe in, you might notice you're going back to neutral. Same with the right side. Every time you breathe in, neck musculature is pulling you back to neutral. I seem to not be feeling any of that. <laughs> oh, the front, back, or the sides? Yeah, it's like I can feel this part responding. Like it's like, so something is stopping me from doing that. Yeah, yeah, that's very good, Linda. Um, so what you're feeling, wherever the most amount of sensation is on the inhale, like you're up to here, and th this is fine, this, like, this is common, that I can feel up to here, and then there's above that, nothing's happening, right? So definitely, I want you to stay with the expansion that's happening across this uh, thoracic inlet diaphragm, okay? And in the neck, can you feel it in the base of the neck, like in the lower part of the neck? Uh, without the rotation, just when we're just normally breathing, can you feel anything across the base of your neck? Yeah. Okay. What I'm noticing is I'm getting this tension in, in between my shoulder blades now. Yeah. Okay. Very. <laughs> is is that tension on every inhale? Um. Well, it's subsided now, but the. Yeah, it, it was very obvious when I was trying all those different positions. It's like it's going, nope. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's very good, Linda. And essentially, wherever your body takes you, that's – we when we have a class, we try to, you know, take a progression in the class. But if your body's bringing your attention to the tightness here, then you stay with that. And um, it'll expand to where it needs to. Yeah. That's perfectly good. Okay. Um, I think people might have been able to feel um, the sides of the head, back of the head, jaw. Cortland, I think you could feel it. 
All right. Uh, Lily, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, able to feel it under the jaw, ears, as you said. Within regards to the tilting of the head on the side, I, I was just feeling awareness uh, on the muscles coming up the neck on both sides. Yeah. I'm not sure if that um, was what I was to be seeking, but that's what I found. Yeah, really good, Lily. Thank you. And Corlin and uh, everyone else. Um, so typically the place that we're going to have the most amount of sensation is going to be muscle attachment points. Because like with a rubber band, if the rubber band's attached to two areas, the way the place that it's going to feel the most tension is like where it attaches. And so you might feel the tension here. And then typically when we start getting into the head, we want to see the sternal cladomastoid, and I'll show pictures, I have a PowerPoint and such, but the sternal cladomastoid comes up and it attaches up behind the ears and it becomes the scalp, actually. Okay. And same with while we're feeling for the jaw movement, now we want to see the supra and the infrahyoid muscles, they attach up into the jaw and into the tongue. So they pull down. Uh, Linda, I'd like to give you uh, another cue for you to just practice while we do things that when you breathe in, I want you to really notice for your shoulder expansion, okay? And what sort of movement and rotation your shoulders have. This is just for Linda. Um, on the inhale, like do they rotate forward? Do they rotate backwards? Are they really paying attention to what your shoulders are doing every time you breathe in? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and Nime is saying, like, can this exercise help with visual disturbances? The thing is, because everything's connected, if you were to look forward and then look to the left and look far enough left, your suboccipital muscles will activate by themselves. You don't have to think about it. Or if you look up or down, you don't have to think about moving your head. You just naturally, the muscular connections exist. The nervous connections and the muscular connections exist. Okay, so when it comes to visual disturbances or issues with the eyes, and we're doing craniosacral therapy, so we're trying to adjust the relative position of the bones too. So all these things are going to connect in with each other. Okay, so if you if you really want to specifically work on visual disturbances, you're going to have to do something specific to the visual disturbances, but in conjunction with what we're doing, rather than uh, whole body breathing, supposed to like tie in your whole body's awareness and proprioception of what's happening. Yeah. So, whatever you could feel, wherever it was, I'm gonna have everyone continue to feel it while I explain theory, because I'm gonna to propose to you that even if I don't tell you anything new, your body will volunteer more information to you if you stay with it. Okay, and I'll just go through some theory. Hey, June. Okay. Nime, when I feel when I exhale deeply, I feel as if my rib cage and trachea are hiding, and the vertebrae in my neck do too. Is that okay? Yeah. So on the inhale, everything expands out, and then on the on the exhale, everything goes back inwards. And this is a uh, part of the theory with whole body breathing is that. And a fully inhaled posture is a confident posture and an open posture. When you breathe in naturally, your chest opens, your shoulders go back, and you're tall, everything. And then if you fully breathe out, it's naturally a depressive posture. Okay. And so the reason for that too is when we're feeling any sort of threat, the sort of and that could be any any emotion, right? The grief, anger, um, anxiety, all of these things. We feel that usually down the front of the body. And I'll give myself as an example, but if someone were to, were to come in and to threaten me, if I felt physically threatened, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna close everything inwards. My psoas muscle is gonna contract, so my legs are gonna come up to protect my belly. I'm gonna shrink in like this, and I'm gonna display my hard back just for protection, okay? That's more of the exhaled posture. This is more of the inhaled. And so, 
when we're when we have unprocessed stuff happening it results in the fascial constrictions so the tightness in our diaphragms across the shoulder girdle main diaphragm pelvic floor our feet and hands are also diaphragms for whole body breathing we have a main head diaphragm and a scalp so those are the seven that we work with okay and like the chakra system certain types of emotions tend to accumulate in certain places and so now that we can feel the tightness with on every inhale, because the breath is always available to us, on every inhale we can feel that tightness. The 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 body needs to breathe, and it will it'll make sure that it breathes. Like you can't go without breathing, right? In order to get that inhale in. Even if you're compensated, you're tight in some place because of some emotion or it could be injury, right? Physical injury, emotional injury, the body doesn't really know the difference. But if there's some injury, the body is so remarkable that it'll simply compensate around it. Okay. And that compensation pattern shows up in a compensated breathing pattern. And so what we're trying to notice is where's, where are my compensations in breathing? Where am I tight? Where am I not fully expanded? This compensation is good for survival purposes. Um, but if we hold the compensation, if I, if I do any exercise with bad form, it'll lead to an injury eventually. And we do thousands of breaths every day. So breathing in that compensated, twisted way with the tightness or however we're doing it, it's inefficient. It uses more energy, so we'll get tired. And over time, it's going to rack up its uh, repetitions on the rib cage and as we're going to show very soon that since we have a tug on the cranial bones on every inhale if that tug is uneven or even worse if that tug is non-existent just if we're holding our neck muscles like tight because we're holding something there then their role in the breathing stops uh linda I'll, for actually for everybody here if you have trouble feeling any of the things we say, laying down also helps because the posture system and the breathing system are the same system. We don't have a different posture system and a different breathing system. They're 100% the same system. And so when we're sitting up or standing, our muscles are also doing their postural role. They're playing their postural function. But if you lay down, that posture function can go dormant and you can entirely just notice what's happening when I breathe in. So now that for everybody here, if you've woken up the whole body breathing to some extent, I'd like you to try it before you go to bed. Because when you're when you're laying down, you will probably feel it even deeper. Okay. So what about if I have my eyes closed, but I can feel the eyelids underneath flickering like mad, like they want to release. That's really good. Yeah, that's very good. Continue with that. So just to show for everybody here that we have 22 cranial bones. That's by the time you're an adult. When you're younger, you have even like even more cranial bones. So to think when we when we are an infant, when we're just born. We actually don't even know that our hand is our hand. If you ever watch a child, like they slowly learn that this thing in front of me, and then they slowly learn I can control this. And then you slowly get the body mapping over time. Okay. It's something quite unique to humans, which is also why the level of dysfunction is also quite unique to humans, because that internal map has to be built over time. The assumption is that somehow that by the time we get to adulthood, that the map is just perfectly built and that's that's not correct the same way a child's learning to use their legs learning to use their spine learning to use their body it doesn't necessarily happen perfectly and just because we reached adulthood doesn't mean that it's finished an injury or a trauma that could be physical or emotional at some point could cause a compensation pattern causes us to begin using the body improperly or because of mirror neurons or just we can just say influence in our environment it could be the people that we're watching or 
the chairs that we're sitting in or the beds and however the environment is also shapes us into not necessarily the ideal mapping. Okay. Psychosomatically, if if a person's anxious or if they're holding some emotion inside of themselves, they're going to be holding a compensated pattern too. So this internal body map is is required because Genuinely, we're not going to try and fix the body. We're not. When I drink this water, in about a few hours, this water is going to somehow become this human. And I don't know how it did that. I don't have the intellectual capacity to make it do that. There's a life operating in here with immense intelligence. What we want to do is give that life the sensory feedback and the mapping and the attention that it needs to to heal itself and to work on itself. One part of that is understanding that you, you don't have just one skull. There's 22 different bones in your skull. And if you want to do self-cranial psychotherapy, self-osteopathy, we have to get a real feel for it. It's not just a block up here. There's not just a block of solid something. There's 22 different bones. Every single time that we breathe in, we have expansion throughout the chest and the back. And in order to lift up the clavicle, in order to lift up the shoulder blades, in order to lift the rib cage, all of the neck musculature activates. And that causes a downwards pull. Downwards and expansive, side to side pull as well. Okay. And if you can feel the pull, that's step one. And then the next step as we progress, I, I encourage you to either, we have a full training and we have private trainings and things like that. So of course, I'm gonna encourage you to join the paid training. But if you keep doing this, your proprioceptive ability should continue to wake up. And we wanted to get to the point where you can feel the individual bones. It's not just I feel a generic pull, but I can feel this temporal bone being pulled. I can feel the occiput being pulled. I can feel the relationship between my maxilla, the jaw bones. Sometimes things will wake up asymmetrically, okay? So we're working on breathing and then somebody can feel their eyelids or they can feel the teeth, something happens. You're just gonna follow your body wherever it's going. But as you follow the body, Rather than just having a felt sense of it, there's actually an anatomical reason underneath. If you look at logically at the body, that on every single inhale, there is a craniosacral expansion. If this is dormant or if it's asymmetrical, we end up with issues in the skull and issues in the spine and issues all through the body. Okay. This is how we're just starting to wake things up, but eventually what we want to get to is using the fascial system really effectively. You have the nuchal ligament. And with whole body breathing theory, we, we go into the evolution, like, because every single structure that we have had a precursor, not only in the evolutionary cycle, but also in the embryological cycle. Okay, so, because when you look at the embryo, it develops similar to a fish. And so the nuchal ligament is meant for holding the head up and pulling the head into its rotation. So what we want to do is to wake that up. And that will really drive craniosacral rhythm. Again, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm just putting out theory here. It's good to know, but really the important part is what you feel. And then if what you feel matches up with anatomically and evolutionarily what seems to make sense, then that's how we made a whole body breathing theory out of it. Okay. As you can see, this is just a, this is just a portion, one slideshow out of the course. So we have a lot of stuff that we can go into. I'm just trying to get a feel for what everyone's feeling in this public class and what sort of things we should cover next. I want to mention as well that your skull, not only on top of not being just one solid block of bone, it's hollow. On the inside, you have a cranium, and that cranium is filled with fluid. 
And every time that you breathe in, studies show that expansion happens via the fluid pressure increasing inside the skull. So I don't think we're going to go into that for this class, but if you can feel pressure inside your skull, then that's what you're feeling. I'd like to thank all the participants here because usually I get into the PowerPoint earlier in the class, but everyone was just doing such a good job that I, I didn't think to go to the PowerPoint. Okay, okay we'll stop sharing the PowerPoint. So June says that I'm meeting relatives and getting scared just by thinking of that day. And it throws into a compromised breathing pattern. June, that's really good. Um, we have that capacity to, first off, uh, we talked about this, June's a training member too. We talked about the fact that nothing is will ever be what you expect. So like all of the scenarios we have for meeting those family members, meeting them will be nothing like that. It'll be so far from anything we imagined. That's what happens every time. Um, but to be able to go a little bit into the future and feel the sort of things that you know will trigger you. So if we have things that cause us grief or that do trigger us, in the same way that we clenched our hands and induced tension into the system, thinking about the things that are going to cause tension in our system is also a good way to start releasing that tension. And this is how whole body breathing, one of the most consistent results we have is that people's anxieties, social anxieties, depressions, things like that, really started to alleviate and the personality changes because all of the things that our body's reacting to subconsciously all the time, if somebody's nervous about going up and talking to people, rather than having to always push them into that situation, which is one way of correcting things, unless they compensate in some other way, right? But one way is that they can feel that. They think about doing it, they can feel it. And now when you breathe in, you can feel, okay, where am I tight? It's not just general anxiety. Rather than feeling general anxiety, we start to feel specifically, where am I feeling anxiety? And then breathing into it and working through it. Okay. Allison is starting to get achiness in the skull and the right side of the face. That's good. Okay. These, these various regions of the body start to wake up. Okay. And if, if you have symptoms, like you have some sort of pain or some symptom that starts coming up again with this, generally that's good as well. Because um, rather than it being randomly, you know, randomly my symptoms start happening, now we're inducing the symptoms so we know what tightness in the body is causing it. Um, Jan says that this information is incredibly profound, especially related to holding emotional issues. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the consultation link. In order to join the training, um, I don't just have a buy link on the website because I actually want to know everybody who's in the training so that when we, we do private classes and everything, so when somebody pops up, I want to have I want to know where you're at, what you're feeling, and so make it a little bit more personal while we can. Um, eventually, the thing might get out of hand and I can't talk to everyone individually, but as long as I can still see everyone individually, I'd like to. So the consultation link is in the chat, and then if you we'll talk about what the program is and everything like that, and if you like it, then you can sign you up to the program. We do, um, we have a 16 hour pre recorded class, which has all of the theory. So, like this PowerPoint was like one PowerPoint out of like a very long theory that we have with exercises. And we do at least four private classes, or we do at least four classes a week. Two of them are private. Okay. And there's a private chat. We have great community members. So, Jan says that this information is incredibly profound, especially related to holding emotional issues. It sounds like a great way to tap into parasympathetic nervous system. I was glad to hear about the clenched fists and realized last year how they'd been walking around with clenched hands. Yeah, painful shoulders. Yeah, thank you very much, Jen. And it, it would be that, um, uh, Linda, do you have something as well? Oh, I, would, I couldn't find the chat. I just found it. <laughs> gotcha. And that the parasympathetic nervous system Unfortunately, most of us are, are walking around constantly tensed in some way, and our body's doing its best. And 
Yeah, with, with whole body breathing, we want to be right on the edge of that. And rather than we do a session, and then after the session, we tense back up, because that, that is what happens a lot of times with various therapies, that we go, somebody works on us, and then we feel better, and then we tense ourselves back up again. A, a common question is, like, how often do I do this? How much of a time commitment it is? And I like to joke that this will this will consume your life because it's your breath. You can always become aware of it. So the more you do it, it's, it becomes the game of life, really. And it, uh, it'll help in all in all fields. Um, June says that you can be in the most Zen place in the world, like a monastery, and still keep traumatizing yourself because what's in your head and vice versa. Exactly. And we're trying to... That's really, really beautifully said, June. Um, as she says that, as soon as I find that I get sensation elsewhere, I have to breathe into it and focus. Otherwise, I default to freeze, and my natural mode is to stop breathing. If I breathe through, I feel woozy and fluidy feeling in the head. Yeah. That's very good, as she the natural mode is to stop breathing. And if you do, and if you freeze or anything like that, um, you're gonna instantly forgive yourself, right? And the natural reactions in the bodies that you have, I know, I, I feel like you're doing this, SG. I'm not trying to tell you that you're doing anything incorrectly, uh, just to elaborate a little bit more. It's a deep curiosity about what my body naturally does. That now that my body felt something new, its first reaction was to freeze. That's usually not ideal. That's, that's uh, makes it harder to live life as well. So if a physical sensation inside makes us freeze and something else outside gives us a physical sensation, that means our natural default is to freeze. Okay. And so we can work into that and sort of thaw it. Freeze is a good word and thawing it is a good word. So this. With the breathing, we're thawing out the body. Okay. And uh, Nime is asking, is it good to feel a crack in the rib cage when I exhale? Or is it a symptom of compensation? So the cracks and pops that we're going to have in the spine and in the skull, that's with the cranial osteopathy, we get to the point where things start to loosen up, the meninges start to loosen up, and people get audible adjustments in the skull, in the spine, in the nasal maxilla. Nasal breathing improves. And any sort of popping or cracking we have as we're doing this process, we're going to consider it to be a normal part of unwinding. Okay. So that's really good. I'll continue for about five to six more minutes because I do enjoy doing this breathing exercise with everybody here. I appreciate everyone participating in it. There's something that I can't explain, but when we do this thing together, I've been doing it for years and it's continuing to improve, but when we do it as a class, I can feel everything more. One beauty of the system is I would say that the amount of information that you get from it, it, it doesn't really ever cap out. Since we're fractal, the, the depth with which you can feel and the way things link in together just continues to get deeper and deeper. Jan says that when having difficult conversations, I sometimes feel a physical pain in my throat and the neck. And we'd love to breathe through those moments. Exactly. This is something you're going to take into the daily life. And so now you might have some feeling of a little bit more expansion in the areas that you've been breathing. And I, 
how to say gently, something will likely tense you up again. But once you can feel the difference, now you can feel, and then you can get a feel for what has tensed me up. And I'll go all the way with what we're trying to do with whole body breathing, is that oftentimes, right now, our body is always feeling these sensations. And this is what I'm proposing to you, that everything that you're feeling now, your body is always subconsciously feeling it. It's not in our conscious mind, so things happen to our conscious mind and our mood and our life. And we don't know why they're happening. They're happening because of all this stuff that's happening under the surface. If we were in a very loud room, I wouldn't be able to hear somebody whispering. And so what we're doing with whole body breathing is we're quieting the noise and we can just feel everything that our body's doing. Using the breath like an internal MRI scan. I might as well take it even further because once you can really feel what your body's doing and you have that quietness inside, then you can feel what other bodies are doing too. You can get a real still feel for the situation around you. It's what's going on inside of you and outside of you. All these things are a continuum. There's no actual hard boundary. Really well done, everyone. I was really enjoying teaching this class. We're gonna be doing two free classes every weekend, two private classes every weekend. I'll drop again, just in the chat, the consultation link if you wanna join like the private community. We go deeper into things because everyone's taking the course and everything. Um, Allison, learning the neck muscles help to pull up the rib cage. This has given me a way to connect the two. That's really good. Um, when you learn the anatomy, uh, that really helps. And the, actually one of the main first lessons in the class is we'll teach you the anatomy of exactly what's happening. Um, and that helps bring the logic into what's happening with every breath. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. There's gonna be uh, no more information after this. Really appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. That was fabulous. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Karen. Thank you, Linda. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, how do I access uh, the link in the chat? I'm on a, I have a phone that I'm viewing today's session on. Yeah, if I type in here right now, does anything pop up on your screen? Um, I, it did earlier. So if you do that again, so I, there was just someone who was leaving the group, the chat, so it came up on my screen. Yeah. Is anyone okay, else on board? Can you just do that one more time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. No worries. Okay. Yes, I have it. I see it now. Perfect. I'll make sure next time I got to I got to go on the mobile app and see where the chat shows up. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Karen. Bye. Have, a, have a terrific day or night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Corlin.